When Germany invaded Poland and World War II broke out, the inferior Polish forces did everything they could to stop them. That fateful September of 1939, a handful of submarines became the nation's only hope, including the fearless and intrepid ORP Orzel. Isolated from the rest of the Polish Navy, Orzel's crew was on its own. And when the submarine turned up in Scottish shores 44 days after the invasion, no one could believe what the warship had been through. In fact, it was so unlikely that she had escaped on her own that the Orzel incident marked the fate of an entire country. The First Day of the War The warship of the Republic of Poland ORP Orzel submarine, or Eagle, was laid down in August of 1936 at Deschelda, a Dutch shipyard. She was subsequently launched in January of 1938 and commissioned in February of 1939, barely months before the outbreak of World War II. A modern design produced by a joint venture of Dutch and Polish submarines, she was the lead ship of the Orzel-class submarines. Though four of her kind were planned, only two were completed in time for the war, Orzel and her sister ORP Sep, or Vulture. Together with Wildcat, Lynx, and Wolf, the sister ships made up the bulk of the Polish Navy's submarine flotilla during the Nazi invasion on September 1st, 1939. That day, Orzel was docked in Oksivia, Gdynia, in northern Poland, and was deployed along with her four companions as part of Operation Vorek to protect the Polish coast from enemy landings. Orzel was ordered to patrol a strategic zone of the Baltic Sea, but the situation was rapidly deteriorating for the brave Polish people. Soon, all five submarines escaped unscathed from their base at the Gulf of Gdansk after a heavy attack by German dive bombers. Still, the flotilla did not encounter many German ships in the eastern Baltic. It was the airstrikes that posed the greatest threat. Even worse, the Polish surface vessels were obliterated in a matter of days, leaving the five remaining underwater boats to continue with their nation's strife. As described by author Brian Kelly in his book Best Little Stories from World War II, quote, Like five orphans, the submarines Vulture, Wildcat, Lynx, Wolf, and Eagle had been cast into a hostile world, entirely on their own, with nowhere to go, not even home. Double-crossed. The submarines soon learned that carrying on with the war on their own was impossible, and the only thing they could do was survive. One by one, they capitulated. Vulture and Lynx made it to a safe haven in Sweden, while Wildcat was not so lucky and was forced to surrender when the Polish capital irremediably fell to the German Blitzkrieg. On the other hand, Wolf made an early choice to reach the English shores, hoping to contribute to the fight with the free Polish navy that had managed to escape to Allied territory. All five submarines were secluded and had to make choices of their own. Orzel tried to stay in the fight a bit longer, laying as many mines as possible, and once even avoided a trap set by the Germans with a false rescue call from a friendly submarine. She was also attacked by minesweepers and severely damaged. But on September 12th, her situation aggravated. All communications with their home port at Gdynia ceased, the same day her hydraulic system collapsed, and her commander, Henrik Kloszkowski, fell ill with a mysterious disease that incapacitated him. As it kept leaking oil, and now under the command of the executive officer, Lieutenant Commander Jan Grzynski, Orzel settled to steam for the neutral Estonian capital of Tallinn. The prevailing international law conferred them no more than 24 hours to stay at a neutral port. The Estonians were welcoming at first, taking Kloszkowski to the hospital and also helping the crew repair the damaged compressor. Long before their time at the port expired, Orzel was restored, refueled, replenished, and ready to set sail. Unfortunately, a German freighter was also in the port, so the Polish ship had to wait six more hours after the Germans parted. The delay seemed deliberate, and when the Germans finally sailed, the Polish submarine was retained. At that point, the Estonians informed their captives that the Baltic states required all belligerent ships in their waters to be disarmed and interned. Presumably under German pressure, the Estonian authorities confiscated all navigational aids, charts, and maps, and also dismantled Orzel's armament and vital components of the deck guns. Even her naval ensign was stripped from the ship's stern. However, her torpedoes couldn't be removed until the following day, and the Poles plotted their escape overnight. By the time the sun rose, an unexpected, heartening note had come on the back of a visiting card from a British sympathizer. It read, quote, Good luck, and God bless you. Cut loose. 
As the workers at the dockyard removed Orzal's twenty torpedoes, her crew prepared for their breakout. One sailor pretended to be fishing while measuring the depth of the escape route, and another managed to hamper the hawsers that secured the ship in place, ensuring that a strong pull at the right time would tear the remaining strands. Next, the radio was dismantled in front of the Estonian authorities, but a counterfeit short circuit and subsequent fire convinced them that it had to be reassembled to trace the malfunction. Meanwhile, Grudzinski himself sabotaged the torpedo hoist, leaving the last six munitions on board. It also helped that it was a Sunday, so the Estonian workers resolved to return on Monday morning to finish the job. Friendly and cooperative, no one suspected the witty Poles were about to accomplish a feat worthy of the history books. When the night fell, only two armed guards remained on board, as the rest had been soothed away from the submarine. Around midnight on September 18th, the lights went out after a crewman severed the dock's main electricity supply cable with the swing of an axe. Swiftly and non-violently, the submariners disarmed the guards and took them hostage. Afterward, the boat slipped away from her berth and into the darkness. The Orzal-class submarine was quite large for the shallow waters of the Baltic Sea, and for an interminable, tense moment, she ran aground a sandbar. Under quiet electrical power, the Orzal had to sneak away as the spotlight swept the entire harbor. Just then, her diesel engines roared, and she turned her bow towards the open sea as the guns at the harbor opened fire. The submariners responded with shells and machine gun and rifle fire until they could plunge into deeper waters beyond reach. Alone again in the hostile Baltic, the submariners were bereft of any navigational aids except for a guide of Swedish lighthouses. Grudzinski hoped to seize the maps from a German vessel, but they never sighted one. After three weeks of searching, a tough decision was made. Their only choice was to head for Britain. But first, the brave Poles approached the Swedish coast and released the two Estonian men in a rubber boat. By then, the press maintained that the two guards were likely executed. However, they were provided with money for their safe return home, as well as clothing and food. The crew believed that those, quote, returning from the underworld deserved to travel first class only. Fallout The Polish officers had to work together and draw a rudimentary map entirely from memory. Sadly, they learned through the salvage radio that their country had surrendered. They also heard that Wolf had reached England, and they were inspired to do the same. Even for a fully equipped submarine, the route was perilous. She had to cross heavily patrolled waters through Sweden and Denmark, and then traverse the North Sea before reaching English waters. With the lighthouses as their only reference, the crew followed the Baltic coast and made it safely to the North Sea. But then they were met with German forces, and were relentlessly attacked both by the enemy and their British allies, as Orzel was not able to identify herself. Still, 44 days after leaving Gdynia, and 27 days after she escaped from Tallinn, Orzel reached the coast of Scotland. Upon arriving, she lay on the bottom until the radio was rendered operational. The submarine then surfaced to send an imperfect message in English, quote, Supposed position from 0630 on appointed place for Polish Navy. Beg permission, entrance, and pilot, but have no chart. Orzel. An English destroyer then came to escort and bring her to the island. To the surprise of the English and Polish alike, Orzel made it safely and lived to fight another day. After a much-needed refit, the submarine joined the Royal Navy in the fight against the Nazi invasion of Norway in April of 1940. Even more, she was the first Allied ship to sink a German vessel during the invasion. Her victim was the clandestine German troop ship Rio de Janeiro. In late May, she departed on her seventh patrol to the Central North Sea. Regrettably, Orzel was never heard from again after sailing. Several expeditions were launched to find her wreck, but it hasn't been found, and her fate remains a mystery. Still, her skipper, Grudzinski, received the Virtuiti Militari, Poland's highest military decoration, for guiding her not only to safety, but also a renewed chance to fulfill her role against the Nazi threat. The Orzel incident, as the event was later called, gave the Soviet occupational forces an excuse to challenge Estonia's neutrality, accusing them of aiding the Polish to escape. By June of 1940, they had swallowed the entire country, foretelling the future of Eastern Europe. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed our video. Please click on the like button and leave us a comment below. And for more heroic stories from the depths of the world wars, don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels. Stay tuned.